if you are getting ready to buy or sell some real estate and you're about to start the process of looking for your next real estate agent, you're gonna to wanna to tune in and I'm gonna explain the difference real quick about the differences between big box brokerages or national franchises and your small mom, pa or boutique um, real estate brokerages such as Streetlight Realty. <clears throat> now, I am Jonas Hubbard with the Miami Valley Experience, but I'm also the broker owner of Streetlight Realty. Now, before we get started, I do want to mention I got my start in real estate at a locally owned, independently operated um, real estate brokerage uh, based out of Cincinnati. I actually worked in the Dayton market, but there was a broker that was based out of the Cincinnati market, and I actually joined his brokerage before eventually ending up at Keller Williams, which is probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest national franchise in the country. Um, I shouldn't say franchise because uh, the one I was at may not be the biggest, but Keller Williams is one of the biggest real estate brokerages in the country is what I meant to say. So any clarification needed, there it was. Uh, and then eventually I ended up at a buddy's brokerage uh, that he had just started. It was me, his partner, and him. And there was just three guys and he built that up to I think maybe somewhere around 20 agents. And then he decided to go ahead and merge with another brokerage um, of sorts, kind of somewhat like that. Anyway, um, and then before he did that, I actually started my own, which is Streetlight Realty uh, at the time of this recording, which is what, October 2022. Uh, we got just shy of 20 agents at our brokerage. And I'm going to kind of let you know what I've noticed having started off at a uh, a decently sized regional uh, brokerage going over to a franchise big box brokerage and then eventually landing at a uh, independently owned brokerage and then starting my own. I don't know why I repeated all that. Sorry, but uh, it sounded different as I was thinking of it. So one of the biggest questions I get, if it even comes up, uh, and, and that's going to be the focal point here is that people don't pick brokerages. Pe people pick people. So when you're interviewing someone to be your buyer's agent or you're interviewing someone to be your listing agent, you're almost always asking questions. What did you do in sales? What was this? What was that? Not, well, what did Remax do? What did Keller Williams do? What did Streetlight do? Nobody cares about that. They care about the person who's going to be representing them. So... That's the important distinct distinguishment that we want to make here is that the brokerage ultimately doesn't matter, but we're going to go over some of the common misconceptions or questions that come up during the interview process, and I'm going to explain or address them right here and now. So if I am going to a listing appointment and I am working with a client uh, or a potential client about the possibility of listing their home, every now and then we may get the question of, well, how does Streetlight Realty or insert boutique brokerage compare to Remax or Keller Williams? I know who those folks are. I have not heard of you. Or maybe I've heard of you, but I'm still just not sure. You're not as big as the other guys. Can you do what they do? And with today's technology, there's virtually nothing, not virtually, there is nothing that a large brokerage, national franchised brokerage or chain of brokers, um, there's nothing that they can do that an independently owned and operated brokerage can't do. Now, some of them may have their specific CRM or customer relationship management tool, if you're not familiar with that term. They may have their own unique website that obviously Streetlight Realty wouldn't have access to because it was custom built for them. But you know what? They don't have access to the Miami Valley experience. So boo. Um, <laughs> uh, the point being is they don't have access to the real questions here. They don't have uh, any more access to more properties. They don't have any more tools for uh, marketing or analytics. Um, all those tools can be readily purchased or made available to independent brokerages, independent agents. Um, really, anybody who wants access could go and pay for these tools and um, compete with the big guys there. Uh, and really quickly to 
prove that if you actually look at a lot of the top producing real estate agents, what you're gonna notice is most of them, if not at least a lot of them, are gonna be at regional brokerages, independently owned and operated brokerages. Some of the top real estate agents in our market, myself included, actually own and operate our own brokerages. Um, so the idea that you can't help people get top dollar or sell real estate um, efficiently for your clients is just not true or you wouldn't have top producing agents that are at smaller brokerages or um, owners of independent brokerages. So keep that in mind. Uh, there's, there's no more tools, text, or data. Whatever word they want to use that sounds fancy to try to say, well, these guys don't have that. It's just trying to, that's just them not offering a good market value proposition for you to hire them over the other agent. Because at the end of the day, there's nothing that Streetlight Realty really has that's um, so proprietary that the other brokerages are at a disadvantage and vice versa. You know, some of these folks try to say that they use some AI and they have um, a Sims-like whatever, who, who knows what they, they brag about. But those things just aren't important. They're not crucial. It's not the make or break to whether or not you can sell real estate. At the end of the day, you need a realtor who is going to be able to walk you through the process because they know the ins and outs of the market, uh, not just locally, but they need to know what's going on. Like right now, we just had a rate hike. Uh, we we are seeing rates as far as 7%. So it's important that your real estate agent is on top of those things and can guide you through that, especially if you're a seller. The longer you hold in the market, it seems like we're uh, quickly walking into, the more value or price or equity or whatever word you wanna use is gonna be left on the table because they're not cluing you into the idea that the market has been shifting into the for the worse. So. And same thing with buyers. If you don't have a real estate agent who's gonna be able to get you properties and send you notifications as quickly as possible uh, so that you can get into properties, there's no tech or tools that can make an agent stay on top of those things. Uh, yes, there are some simple automations that everybody has access to. Heck, just for being a part of the Dayton MLS, there are built-in notifications that any real estate agent could use. So it doesn't matter what brokerage you're at. They're just, tools that are available for being a realtor for the Dayton Area Board of Realtors. And um, same thing with Cincinnati and Springfield. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, you need to make sure you're taking the time to interview an agent whose personality is going to match and mirror yours and that you're going to be able to work with and make sure that they are individually responsible because you could work with a real estate agent uh, such as uh, myself and another agent within my brokerage and have two totally different experiences. Now, uh, one of the other things someone may try to rely on is the fact that, well, this brokerage or this brokerage or this brokerage offers such and such training. Well, one thing you got to remember about real estate agents is we're all independent contractors. We're 1099. You can't necessarily require anyone to do a certain type of training. You can't require anyone to do real estate the exact way the broker might or the office manager or the office administrator, trainer, doesn't matter. You can't force someone to sell or help people buy real estate in a very specific fashion. It's not like Chick-fil-A where every single person is going to say, my pleasure after the end of a transaction. We can't do that. We can recommend it. We can say these are best practices. But at the end of the day, the real estate agent that you worked with is a self-employed independent contractor and they're going to be able to conduct their business in the best way that they see fit as long as it's compliant with state rules and regulations. So, um, moving on to a different point, I got some stuff written over here, so and I don't really edit these videos I used to, and I'd rather just get some videos out. Um, hopefully this is not too cumbersome or annoying for folks because I do not edit. Um, but, you know, there are some benefits to actually going with a boutique. For instance, and, and this can still be an issue because at the end of the day, different people own and operate their businesses differently. But if you are having issues in the middle of a transaction, such as getting a hold of your real estate agent, reaching out to the broker or the owner, 
I think is a lot easier at a company like Streetlight Realty. You go to the website, you call the number, you're gonna get my cell phone. You call one of these big box folks, you're gonna call, you're gonna get a front desk person, they're gonna tell you the broker's gonna get in touch with you and then the broker's gonna tell you, well, I'm the broker, but I am not the owner, I'm not the decision maker, so I'm gonna have to get back to you on that. And there's just more bureaucracy, there's more red tape. Hopefully you never even have to get down this road, but I'd be lying if I would say that doesn't happen because it can and it will eventually happen to just about any other brokerage out there. I um, hope it doesn't happen with Streetlight, but I see a day where it might. Um, so again, you're interviewing the real estate agent. So when you're looking at reviews, you're not Googling Remax reviews. You're not Googling Keller William reviews. You're gonna be looking up Jonas Albert, Streetlight Realty agent. You care what Jonas Albert's got to do. Um, you know, if you want uh, to hire, I'm trying to think of a real estate agent that's not local that I could just say, I don't know, John Smith at ABC Brokerage, you're going to Google him and you're going to see what his reviews are. You're going to see what Susie Q's up to. That's how you're going to be truly deciding, or you should be at least, if you're not interviewing uh, real estate agents and you're just going with the first one for whatever reason, that may may not be the best idea. You may not know what you're getting into. They may not have any reviews, which could be a question mark. I'm pretty bad at asking clients for reviews, but they're still out there. You can still find them. And I want to say they're all pretty good. Um, just Google it. Google it. You'll find out. But um, I do got one bad review. I brought the food out too, too uh, slow. Um, so cold food. I think it was probably for the wrong business, but Google doesn't seem to care and won't fix that for me. So keep that in mind. Of course, you want to work with a good, reputable brokerage. Um, doesn't hurt to, to scoop out the brokerage a little bit. Doesn't hurt to interview the agent, check out the agent's reviews. But at the end of the day, remember that is who you're interviewing. When I make any type of lender recommendations or home inspector recommendations. I always tell everyone to do their own due diligence, their own research, pick the person that they want to work with, and to remember and understand, if I tell you I had a really good experience at Wright Pack Credit Union with their mortgage division, well, the loan officer I deal with happens to be a buddy of mine. He does a really, really good job. There are other folks that I use at Right Pack Credit Union. They do a really, really good job. The new person who may get hired may not always be the same level of service because they're two different people within the same business, just like Chick-fil-A. Actually, I'm, I have, I've had one bad experience at Chick-fil-A. So, uh, you know, individuals don't necessarily represent the company. Obviously, they, they wear the logos, they wear the badges, but the point is the service can be entirely different. So it's super important that you keep that in mind and always remember you're interviewing the individual, right? So I'm not the same as Katie Masters at the brokerage, as Jim Powell. They're all great realtors. We're going to have the things that people like about us and dislike about us, which naturally compels them to go work with one or the other. Um, that's just how it is. That's within the same house. Uh, I think we all do a good job here, but um, the service and experience will be a little bit different. So that's all I really wanted to point out. I don't want you to write off a boutique brokerage um, for a big franchise brokerage because at the end of the day, heck, there is another brokerage out there that is quickly becoming one of the largest brokerages in the country. And if I wanted, I could use the exact same website that they offer to all of their agents because it's a website builder for real estate companies. They're, they don't have anything that's, uh, um, what is that called? Specific to them, the word slipping, but that's okay. I mean, they got their Sims universe, but that doesn't really help you, the client. Um, and I'm not trying to poo-poo on the, all these other folks. They're, for some people, they may like that big box feel. Um, and I'm not even saying you can't get personalization at a big box. So keep that in mind. There, there are great agents at some of these large brokerages. I learned a lot from some really, really good agents when I was at Keller Williams. Uh, there's a lot of people I'd use over there. So again, there's, there's just no difference. It comes down to the person. I, I can't 
hammer that enough. Um, one of the things I probably do like about a small independently owned and operated brokerage such as Streetlight is that as we grow and the more business we can conduct, that money stays within the community. Um, you know, when I make a hiring decision um, for my brokerage, I always try to keep it local. I try to use other local contractors. Uh, I actually try not to use any national uh, franchise or vendor if possible. There are certain tools that we just need that um, uh, can't be helped. But if I can, I try to stay local, even for my own business. Um, I just think it's the right thing to do, keep things local, it helps our local economy. So from that standpoint, it's there's also some advantages. But yeah, if you're looking to buy or sell some real estate within the Miami Valley, feel free to reach us, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we do, you know, our home base is right here in Dayton, but we have an office in Cincinnati, we got an office in New Lebanon, and hopefully we'll eventually have an office in Springfield, but we do conduct a lot of business out there, and we are helping folks all the time, and we cover everything in between, which makes up the Miami Valley. So if there's anything we can do for you, feel free to reach out, drop a comment, uh, reach out to us on Facebook. Uh, you can go to our website, streetlightrealtors.com. Uh, Google Jonas Helbert, you'll find me. Uh, I, I try not to stay hidden. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, all over the place. Uh, we hope to work with you in the future. Uh, let me know if you appreciated the video. If there's anything else that we can do, uh, feel free to let us know. If there's a particular topic you'd like to learn more about, let us know and we'll try to make it happen.